So here we are with Liz Garbus. The documentary is Bobby Fischer Against the World. And I guess the first question is, who cares about Bobby Fischer? He's dead. Uh, who knows who he was? He was a crazy guy who um, hated the United States at the end, uh, a Jewish guy who was anti-Semitic. I mean, does it matter that he was the greatest chess player the world has ever seen? And why did you want to make a movie about him? Well, you know... I cared. No, I think Bobby Fischer, um, in 1972, the entire world, the United States, was obsessed with chess. Um, here was this lone American, self-taught Brooklyn kid. A good-looking kid with a, a good sense of humor. A guy, seemingly with a, with a sense of humor about himself good looking, worked out, um, you know, rose to national stardom and celebrity because he was seemingly unbeatable on the chessboard. He had the most sort of creative play. He knew more about, he, he taught himself Russian so he could study their books. Um, because all the Russian masters were the great chess champions at that era. The They'd Russian, been that way for 40 years or something. The Russians had made our, our mortal enemy at the time. It was the Cold War. The Russians had made chess their national sport. The, it was their way. It was a very cheap way, you know, because chess is not expensive to play, of demonstrating to the world their intellectual superiority over, over everyone else. And they just turned out one world champion after the other. The Russians totally dominated this world. Never had an American for a hundred years or so gotten close. Um... All of a sudden, there's this Brooklyn kid, Bobby Fischer. Who, who had seems become unbeatable. the U.S. chess champion at 16, right. right? He was the youngest grandmaster in history, became a grandmaster at 15. That's the highest title in the world of chess, uh, other than world champion. And uh, here was this guy, and he was ready to take on the Russians. Now, this captivated our national imagination, and Bobby became the biggest thing. Um, he played Boris Spassky, the Russian champion. It was in Times Square even. It was what you would do today with the Oscars or the Tonys or a moon landing broadcasting it and people would come to Times Square and watch it on on, on the on the ticker and, and people would line up outside department stores and look at all the TV screens. There was a poll of the local bars in New York City and 14 out of 18 had on the World Chess Championship. Only four had on the Mets. <laughs> it was that big. It bumped. It was John Chancellor when he does the nightly news. It bumps the Watergate story to talk first about the results of the chess match. It was everything. It was as if Obama decided he was going to go, if, if Al-Qaeda had held the world championship in, in, in chess and Obama decided he was going to go play them. I mean, it was everything. It was the way the whole world was organized. And here was this handsome, unbeatable guy, Bobby Fischer, um, with a good, you know, just came up through the, weed, you know, like a weed through the cracks to, to this um, extraordinary chess player. And he made it exciting because you never knew what he was going to do next. In the match of 1972, the world champion, it starts, supposed to start on July 1st. Bobby Fischer's not there. It's in? It's in Reykjavik, Iceland. Uh, he doesn't show up. He hasn't gotten on the plane. He's hiding out in a friend's house in Long Island. He doesn't like the conditions. He doesn't like the purse. He doesn't want to go. Um, so he, may, you know, he keeps us in the air. He goes there, and he's supposedly unbeatable. He loses the first game. You know, the second game, he doesn't show 